Hello everyone, welcome to Salesforce Atlas. My name is Dorissa, if you're new to the channel, I hope that you're doing great. In today's episode, I would like to talk to you about restriction rules. Now, I know that this feature has been out for a while now, but I still didn't manage to do a video about it. And I think it is a really good feature, even though it has some limitations. With the restriction rules, you can prevent your users accessing data that may or may not contain some sensitive information, or you may think that this, these records are simply not relevant for, for what they do for their work, and uh, you can apply this as well. You have to keep in mind that you can't really use this across all objects, not yet. Hopefully Salesforce will update these restriction rules, but right now you can use it across all custom objects. If you have in your environment, I'm sure that you most likely have as well custom objects. And um, you can also use it on your contracts, tasks, events. And uh, also what I found, it wasn't in Salesforce, but Salesforce Ben uh, wrote as well that you can use this in timesheets and timesheet entries. So you can see that you can't use it across all objects. However, it's a very good tool and I will demonstrate this in today's video. Here you can see I just had to verify something and uh, in Salesforce help documents, they didn't really mention timesheets and timesheet entries. So it was a good find in Salesforce Ben. And now I'll just close this tab and maybe we will return as well to this uh, help page. But right now in my one of my trailhead playgrounds, as always, I have selected tasks. This is one of the objects where you can use restriction rules. Now it has loaded. And uh, just to visually show this, how restriction rules work, we have our OED, organization-wide default sharing mechanisms uh, that could be either role hierarchy, sharing rules, and uh, other mechanisms. And then we have new restriction rules, basically a filter that will also re remove some some sensitive data, some sen sensitive records that have specific uh, field value or they match some specific permission set plus a field value. And I will show this to you when I'm creating a new rule. Once they have gone through all these steps, we will have our filtered records that only records that meet restriction rule criteria are visible to our users. And uh, you can also select which users, do you mean all users or do you want to pick up on specific user profiles, or maybe it will be a task record type. So you can select as well record types. Now, if I go and create a new rule, so we actually had a button in two places, I have selected tasks and I thought about the criteria type that I'll be using. And I would like to restrict, remove all internal calls. Now, this is just a, an example, remove all internal calls and you can mark it as active. I will keep it as a user criterion and my users, I would like to select, actually, I will select all active users. So you just need to type in active and select this. Now, user is active equals Boolean. That's the only, oh, you can use a current user or Boolean, but I will just, I will select Boolean and active user equals true. I want to target all active users. My inactive users most likely can't even access the platform here. And the operator by default is equals. Maybe later in the future, we'll have some more options to add different operators. Right now, we only have uh, this value and uh, with the record cr criteria. Now I want to, I want to filter out all records, all tasks with the call type, call type equals internal. I want to hide all internal calls from users. Maybe this is not the best example, but you can imagine that when you have a specific reason to hide some records, uh, if you want to hide it from a specific user profile, you can select profile and then equals your profile name. Or if you want to remove users in a specific maybe division you could do that as well if i check here yes you can select division as well uh, or department you will find a wide range of options here and uh, in the record criteria the record field this could be also your record type 
or if it is a more sensitive information, then perhaps those records have a field that will show that this is a sensitive document and uh, hide it from all other users. So you will be able to use that field value. Let's say I'm happy with the selection and then I click save. Now this new rule will remove all tasks with the task type internal call because we just want to hide it. If we go back to this task, you can see who created it created date, last modified by, and last modified date as well. And you can delete it, or you can also edit this rule. And you could change your criteria to permission criteria. And with permissions, let's imagine that now in this example, as I'm using tasks, I want to hide all tasks. Then maybe you have a permission called hide tasks. I'm not sure if I have any permissions here in this environment. But let's say that you want to hide all tasks and you have a permission for that. And then you can open up some more access to these records. You can select that your task assigned to ID equals current user ID. And now that now again, imagine that I have this permission set here that is hiding all tasks. However, I will open up and I will provide you access if you own this task, then you will be able to see your own task and then you just click save. Now, these are just some of ideas, but you can think about the way you would like to use these restriction rules. There are some things to consider as well. If we go back to this help document with the restriction rules, as it said, that it is available to custom objects, external objects, contracts, tasks, and events, as well as timesheets and timesheet entries. And once you have enabled restriction rules, records will disappear from list views, lookups, related lists, reports, searches, SOCL, and SOCL as well. It is a good tool. Hopefully, we'll see some improvements here and uh, we'll be able to use across some other objects. I'm sure there are, there are serious reasons why we can't use this on other objects just yet. I hope you have learned something new and now you know how to use restriction rules in Salesforce. And uh, go ahead, try in your sandbox environment or just play around in uh, one of these trailhead playgrounds. You can definitely try it out. And I hope that you will find this useful and later can apply in your production org. Thanks a lot for getting this far in the video and I will see you next time. Take care.